Welcome to Rank Rhino, where you can learn it all. Today, we're taking a look at the top 10 most infamous Ponzi schemes. In this list, we're going through the Ponzi schemes that fooled investors and corporations for hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars. Number 10. Lou Pearlman. Bed, which they don't know where they are sometimes, you know, they forget what city they're in. Most people know Lou Pearlman as the mastermind behind renowned boy bands NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, but the man also has a stain on his legacy in the form of a Ponzi scheme. Pearlman got sued by the boy bands he created, with them accusing him of stealing money, but the real heavy hitter is him swindling investors and banks out of more than $300 million on the basis of companies that only existed on paper. I just can't for the life of me figure out. He did get caught and in 2008 he was convicted of conspiracy and money laundering charges. He was sentenced to 25 years in federal prison but only served 8 as he died in 2016 at the age of 62. Number 9. Gerald Payne. So how did Payne pull off one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in American history? How did Gerald Payne manage to scam investors out of nearly $450 million? In the 1990s, Payne and the leaders at its Greater Ministries International Church managed to convince nearly 20,000 investors to hand over millions of dollars to a program called Double Year Blessings. In 1997, Payne and Eidson placed an ad in a Patriot Movement publication. With so much money getting handed over to Payne and the church, the taxman obviously got suspicious. The IRS began to investigate on the basis of suspicious bank activity and, by 2001, Gerald Payne was convicted and sentenced to 27 years in prison even though he argued the US government had no authority over religious organizations. The IRS called it one of the biggest Ponzi schemes it had ever investigated, which is pretty impressive in and of itself. Number 8. Reed Slatkin Slatkin stole money from his new investors and use some of that. Reed Slatkin is known as a co-founder of the internet service provider Earthlink, which launched in the 90s, but his Ponzi scheme started long before the company even existed. Back in the mid-1980s, Slatkin was a financial investor and he was persuading his friends in church and Scientology members to give them their funds so that he could guide them. He then met Sky Dayton in the early 90s and the pair founded Earthlink Networks. The company proved successful and Apple's iMac even invested over $200 million into it. Slacken's reputation and status grew exponentially through this period of his life. The thing was, although Slatkin had a reputation for being a legit financial advisor, the money he was supposedly investing for his clients was actually getting channeled into his own pockets and the Church of Scientology. He was found out in the early 2000s when the technology bubble reached its peak, but his clients couldn't cash in their investments. In 2003, Reed Slatkin pleaded guilty to defrauding his investors of nearly $600 million and he was sentenced to 14 years in federal prison. Number 7. Jean-Pierre Van Rossum Belgian Jean-Pierre Van Rossum is notorious for cheating investors out of over $850 million. He was so rich that he was the majority owner of Formula 1 racing team Onyx Grand Prix in the 1980s. His Ponzi scheme came through his company, Monitron, which alleged that it had a computer model capable of predicting stock markets. Van Rossum used his background in economics and his reputation as a stock market guru to influence people to invest in his firm. The thing was, he was actually lining his own pockets with their money and the investors found that out when they weren't getting their checks from Monitron. In 1991, he was sentenced to 5 years in prison for fraud and he attempted to avoid jail time by entering politics and being part of the Belgian parliament for several years. Number 6. Sergei Mavrodi Imagine your scheme being so successful that you launch your own currency. That's the story of Sergei Mavrodi. Mavrodi established his tech company, MMM, in 1989 and began his financial fraud in 1994 when the firm issued its first round of shares at 0.65 cents each, promising they would yield a 1000% return. He set the prices arbitrarily though and they reached $81 later that same year. 
Up to 10 million Russians got conned out of their savings, with Mavrodi reportedly having a net worth of up to 10 billion dollars at a point. Authorities did eventually catch on to his scheme and arrested him for tax evasion. While he was under investigation, Sergei Mavroy secured a seat in parliament, thus gaining immunity and disappeared shortly after. He was captured in 2003 and sentenced to 4 years in prison. Number 5. Joel Steinger While mutual benefit is publicly seen as a generous benefactor... Imagine making money off of life insurance policies. Joel Steinger's Mutual Benefits Corporation bought life insurance from terminally ill patients at a discount and then proceeded to sell them to investors with the promise of high returns. Steinger went as far as regularly bribing doctors to falsify health records, using these records to trick investors into believing that the beneficiaries were on their deathbed. The checks from the funds that ultimately came from the people investing in the company. Eventually, investors figured the Ponzi scheme out when they realized that 90% of the patients were living much longer than Steinger promised and filed complaints. A slow response from the authorities enabled Joel Steinger's NBC to continue its operations for over a decade until he eventually got sentenced to 20 years in prison in 2014. Number 4. Charles Ponzi In Ponzi's case, the promise was to double your money in three months. You can't talk about Ponzi schemes without mentioning the man who the world is named after. Although his $15 million might seem like pocket change compared to the other people on our list, Ponzi's scheme isn't just about the money, but the speed at which he managed to execute his devious plan. A lot of people confuse the idea of a Ponzi scheme with a pyramid scheme. According to magazines from the time, Charles Ponzi managed to earn the $15 million in around 8 months by convincing investors that he could make them rich via international postal reply coupons. His story is so infamous that people use it as the basics of what a pyramid scheme is. Take money from a new investor to pay back an old one. He did eventually get caught and he spent 2 years in Atlanta prison. Number 3. Tom Petters a plan is in place to distribute $172 million to victims. Tom Petters was so successful due to his scams that he even had his own magazine. During the 90s, his company, Petter Group Worldwide, marketed itself as a legitimate wholesaler of consumer goods. The truth was that Petters falsified purchase orders and statements to lure investors into handling over billions of dollars to his company. He used part of the money to pay back earlier investors and he pocketed the rest. Over the years, he sold off Petter's properties and combed through companies in the former businessman's massive Ponzi scheme. He wasn't found out by the investors or by the government, though. In 2008, an employee of his company confessed to aiding in a Ponzi scheme and provided the authorities with a recording in which Petters admitted that the orders were fake. He got sentenced to 50 years in prison for mail fraud, wire fraud and money laundering. Number 2. R. Allen Stanford. Hello everyone, the first half of 2000, I don't like that. The Stanford Financial Group was a Caribbean-based firm founded by R. Allen Stanford. His company sold certificates of deposits and promised investors a much higher interest rate than competitors. Stanford would then proceed to misappropriate the funds his company earned so that he could fund his lavish lifestyle. He managed to swindle 30,000 investors from more than 100 countries. Kathleen and thousands of others lost their money. And a US... Eventually, the US authorities became suspicious of the high interest rate that the Stanford Financial Group offered and began investigating. This led to Stanford's arrest, with the prosecutors accusing him of funneling funds into his personal interests. Stanford was sentenced to 110 years in prison. To this day, 18,000 of his clients are yet to recover their funds. Number 1. Bernie Madoff you know, in today's regulatory environment, it's virtually impossible. Bernie Madoff's name is synonymous with the term Ponzi scheme, with him getting credit for running the biggest financial fraud in history. Madoff used his own hedge fund to scam investors by promising double-digit returns regardless of the stock market performance. The reality is that the former Nasdaq chairman simply deposited the investor proceeds into a bank account and then withdrew the money whenever someone wanted to cash out. And he added, I live in a tormented state knowing all the pain and suffering I have Catching Bernie Madoff was tricky. Despite being investigated multiple times, he avoided legal trouble for years. 
The government managed to finally capture him during the 2008 financial crisis when he was unable to satisfy the redemptions that his clients were requesting. He was given the maximum penalty of 150 years in prison in 2009 and remained in jail until his death in 2021. Thank you for watching guys. Have you ever considered running your own scheme? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like the video and subscribe.